What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some more JJK Season 2, rocking two of the best women on this show. Uh, cannot wait to keep going back into this. Cannot wait to continue this amazing show after the last week. Oh, my Lord. Remember, if you guys want the full uncut versions as well as early access to the shows I'm watching, check out that Patreon. Links are down below, like always. Let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into today's episodes. JJK Season 2. It should be Episode 14. I want you guys to know it's been approximately 10 minutes since the intro I just recorded for you guys, and I still can't watch the episode. Crunchyroll is just crashing. Come on, JJK. All right, it only took 20 minutes of Crunchyroll crashing, but we're finally back into the episode. Oh, we're back with Mei Mei and the smallpox deity. So she is trying to go on the offense, but no matter what, he's just putting her in these coffins and then crushing her with rocks. Oh. Good point. Because this is the mini boss. I'm hoping we can do that without him dying. I love how... Oh. It's cutting to the potential body of him. Oh, no. All right, so he's unloading some cursed energy, making it just flow as freely as possible, so he becomes the number one target. Ooh, within that split second? Before the fucking gravestone could even bury him? Oh my god, that animation was fluid. Simple domain? Ah, ah, simple domain for the anti-domains. Is that the crow coming in high speed? Imbued with curse energy? Ooh, piercing too. Holy shit! Is that the smallpox deity done? Blackbird manipulation. The crowning attack. Kamikaze bird strike. Oh. I mean... It's a, it's very ethically kind of weird because we're sacrificing the lives of birds. People have their own opinions on the value of, of bird lives. But I get that sentimentality from a cursed energy perspective. If you're willing to kamikaze bomb, kill yourself upon knowing that you unleash your cursed energy unrelentlessly, yeah, no human's going to be able to stop that. That's fucking excessive, especially with the piercing power too. So just like that, the smallpox deity is done, and we're on to the main event. For a modern sorcerer, I wonder what he means by that. I get why she says that, but I want him to. I want to see him fight so bad. Yeah, he is drunk. Am I gonna get a Maki moment at all, and another Nanami moment maybe? This is one of the this is one of the curses with Jogo, Hanami. Wait, what? Wait, what the? What? I was so nervous to see this thing fight because we have seen him. We've seen him hang out with us the whole time, but we have not seen him fight. But who the hell is Naobito? I think this is our first time hearing it talk, right? We know it's been kicking it with Jogo and Hanami and Geto and Mahito. I wonder how it feels that Hanami's dead. Oh, it does not like that at all. What was it? In a shell? What in the... It's like an ocean spirit, right? Shout out Maki being resourceful. It's like we're fighting fucking Toby Rama out here. Depends. 60 FPS, 120 FPS. I'm a... Dag on. What is Naobito talking about? I'm scaling to 4K, 60 frame interpolation. My man speaking facts. Oh, 
They're having two completely different conversations right now. Ooh. See, he like folds them in like a paper. It's like an origami power or something. I love how in typical JJ fa JJK fashion, we're not afraid to jump him. Oh yeah, several. This is our first time seeing Dagon fight. With the music? Like I said, typical JJK fashion, we're not afraid to jump him. Ooh, Nalbito's already in the air. <laughs> I need to know everything about Naobito, leader of the Zenin clan. What? Okay, I'm trying to understand his power. In depth, you guys know me. I try to process everything. So, in the one second that he activates it, it splits that second into 24 frames from his field of view, in which on those frames, every frame is a certain action. He can map out his actions of the 24 frames over that next second before that even happens. So, he's already mapped out what he's going to do, and anyone he touches also has to do the same. So, for example, Dagon touches Dagon. If Dagon doesn't actively map out those 24 frames every frame what he's gonna do then he just freezes and his action is hanging and he's frozen for a second which obviously in a highly intensive combative fight like this is super handy what the hell that low key is one of the most creative powers i've seen i wonder he was talking about fps and frame interpolation and how that would affect him watching tv it makes a lot more sense now but how do you come up with a power like that it cannot be edited so once you frame it out you're doing that so he has to be like smart about the way he frames he can't just say i go from this to instantly killing you that wouldn't make sense in a animation wise you know project with his innate sense of frame beats and times he's just mastered it oh my god that makes so much sense bro if he can just master it time everything accordingly domain oh, no are we back at the beach we were kicking out with mahito and the rest of them is this his domain this is all where we were at season one it is his domain i had no idea throughout season one we were kicking it in dagon's domain horizon of the captivating skanda like piranha shikigami and they like fade away falling blossom emotion okay i'm about to read that i just want to get this off my head real quick the the piranhas shikigami attacking you before you can even notice them reminds me of hunter hunter when killua was fighting i think they were either cousins or sisters the chimera siblings when they had their little gambling dart board you know when they would throw the uh like spearfish whatever you know with the, like the long and it would stab and you wouldn't be able to notice it until it stabbed you literally reminds me so much of that i'm loving the creativity in this so far but uh, an anti-domain technique passed down amongst the big clan death swarm oh my god we're in one piece now look at all these sea kings oh my god He's just defending with his... At the moment they attack, his cursed energy is deflecting him. And then there's Dagon. Oh my god. Bro, I won't lie. These are three of my favorite people in the show in terms of strength. And he's having his way with them. An endless swarm of emerging Shikigami. Nanami's okay, right? Nabito's okay, right? 
Octo bitch, talk your shit, Maki. Magumi? Magumi? Did he also run into Dagon? Playful Cloud? You're a legend, Megumi. One hell of a cheeky underclassman. So he's hopping in. Domain on domain. Cheeky Gami user battle. I know that hurt. We know Maki with this thing is different. I'm saying Cheeky Gami versus Cheeky Gami. Playing tug of war. His is also uh, endless chimera Shikigami, so. <laughs> Shout out the fucking legend, Megumi. I'm loving this animation. I'm loving this episode right now. Oh my god. Shout out Nanami, you fucking legend. Oh my. Who's stopping this man? Naobito lost an arm? Bro. That's so handy that the Shikigami, he can just pull out any part of his body. Bro, everyone is going beyond their limits and pushing fucking... To allow us to escape? Thank the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Good. Same thing Gojo was teaching us last uh last uh season. Alright, within this split second, can we jump in this goddamn hole? Someone's coming up? In? I want to tell you guys, I mean this so wholeheartedly when I say this, and genuinely when I say this, that you guys were hyping up Shibuya. And obviously, I believed you guys. I'm not going to, you guys aren't going to gaslight me for no reason type situation. But when I truly say, if the next 10 episodes we get, like we can have a rest episode here and there, if we get a fight, like even remotely creative, even remotely good, an episode for the, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is easily going down as one of the best seasons of modern anime. Especially of JJK, like, oh my. It's like, to go from a fight last episode as insane as it was, that's a, that's, a, that's a fight that could last you a whole season. That's one that's, you're like, okay, our season was amazing. That was it. Then we go on to this one with May and Ghetto and the Smallpox. And then we go to now, oh, and then it ends with Toe. So you know it's not over and it's only going to keep going. Okay, let's talk about that ending. We're about to escape. I'm so excited. Toji ends up coming in. So... I don't think Toji and Megumi are going to recognize each other immediately at all. I think the recognition that's going to happen is between Naobito and Toji. As I don't know their relation. I, obviously, they're both Zenin members, so they have to be some sort of cousins, uncles, fucking... You know what I'm saying? They have to be some sort of familial relation. But I don't know the specificity. So I think Naobito is going to see Toji be like, you, how, first off, how are you back? You motherfucker, you're supposed to be dead. Second off, and then Toji's gonna be like, oh, you son of a bitch, you know, that, you know? And then Megumi's gonna be like, wait, Toji, is that not my dad? You know, and it's gonna be like, oh my god, bro, this episode. Seeing Naobito fight, I've wanted that for a long time. His power is so creative. Seeing Nanami go insane, seeing uh, Dagon's domain expand, bro. This season is hitting all aspects for me, every single aspect, and I'm loving it. Hopefully you guys are as well. If you are, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. Don't forget to check out that Patreon if you guys want early access, full length, all that. Uh, I appreciate y'all watching. Really do. I will see you guys next week. You guys are JJKers. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.